Hello everyone, my name's Lucy. I'm Head of Research Communications at Diabetes UK. So many of you are aware that on the 20th of May, NHS England published some research looking at the link between diabetes and risk of death from coronavirus. And we know that you have lots of questions about this research. We've seen that you've been calling our helpline and posting on social media. And we understand the research is complicated um, and can be quite confusing. So we've put this video together to help you understand what the main findings are and what this means for you. So first of all, I'm not going to talk about diabetes, I'm going to talk about age. And the reason I'm talking about age first is that we know from data from around the world that age is the strongest risk factor for death from the virus. So sadly we know that the majority of people who have died have been older adults, particularly those aged over 80 years. And we know that far fewer working age adults have died and hardly any children. So what this tells us is that children and working age adults have a low baseline risk of dying from the virus because of their age and that older adults have a higher risk because of their age. Excuse the DIY props. Right, I'll leave age for a moment and focus on diabetes. So we know from the research that was published that people with diabetes were found to be more at risk of dying from the virus than people without the condition. And we learned for the first time that people with type 1 have a higher risk than people with type 2 and other types of diabetes. So we learned that people with type 1 have three and a half times the risk compared to people without the condition and people with type 2 or other types of diabetes twice the risk. And these figures I can understand are alarming. Um, but what I want to explain to you now is that these figures need to be thought about in terms of baseline risk. So to help me explain this, I've recruited some friends, courtesy of my son Frank. So I'll just introduce you. Friend here without diabetes, friend here with type 2 diabetes, and friend here with type 1 diabetes. So let's say this gang are all in their 20s. Because of their age, we know that their baseline risk is really low. So, low baseline risk of dying from the virus, shown with a small dot here. So we know that our friend here with type 2 has twice the risk of this guy of dying from the virus. But because the risk is so low to begin with, that dot's not much bigger, still very low risk. And our friend here with type 1 has three and a half times the risk. But again, because the baseline risk was initially so low, the risk is still low. Now, let's imagine our gang in their 80s. We know that people, older adults, have a higher baseline risk of dying from the virus because of their age. So we can show bigger baseline risk, the bigger dot. Type 2, person with type 2 has twice the risk of someone without diabetes, so twice that dot like that and person with type 1 has three and a half times the risk. So what this is showing us is that our baseline risk is really important to understand what these figures mean. So our friend here without diabetes has a higher baseline risk to begin with and if you've got diabetes this is significantly adding to the risk. What we also learned from the research is that there are many other factors that come into play to determine an individual's risk. No one will have the same risk, everyone will have their own unique risk. And what we learn is that your, as well as your age and your type of diabetes, your ethnicity, your sex, where you live and your deprivation levels, your blood sugar levels and also your body weight are all important risk factors. And of course many of those risk factors you can't control, you can't change your age, you can't change what, diabetes, what type of diabetes you have, you can't change your ethnicity. But we know that people with higher blood sugar levels are at increased risk. So we can do all, all that we can in the current environment, current situation, to try and keep our blood sugars in target as much as possible. So that's one way we can all reduce our risk. And I say we here because I have type 1 diabetes. Um, Body weight also came out as a risk factor for um, death from uh, the virus. 
So now more than ever for all of us, it's really important that we all try and maintain a healthy lifestyle as much as we can. So that means eating a healthy balanced diet, getting as much exercise as we can and getting enough sleep. So I hope this short demonstration helped you understand um, that while people with diabetes do have an increased risk of dying from coronavirus, that this risk is really dependent on your baseline risk and your age. And I also hope um, this helped you understand there are a few things that you can do to help to reduce your risk. The main one at this time is to try and keep your blood sugar levels in as target range as you can. So I understand you may have more questions and more concerns our helpline is here, we, we're here to help you. Please do give us a call if you need to talk. We also have more information on our website, so please go there and take a look. And finally, just to say, please stick with social distancing, wash your hands. The best thing we can all do is avoid catching the virus in the first place.